what's up guys um just to i thought i'd bring you a sort of slightly different video where i record commentary over it the reason why is this was recorded on my stream at like 2 a.m in the morning i've been streaming for like six hours at the time and the the music was fine but it just just me occasionally mumbling uh throughout the first act and um, i didn't think it was that engaging but i did want to you know i didn't want to lose the chance of showing off the video um it's a ascension 10 so the difficulty is creeping up a bit and it's also um, a rock electric deck so we'll just get into it just as a backstory the thumbnail for this video took three hours um <laughs> not saying it's it's a brilliant thumbnail but i just thought it took three hours and a lot of swearing to create which is why this video was also delayed and then the video corrupted a bunch of times but um it was just to to share with you some of the pain i've gone through uh, not to guilt trip you or anything but i thought it's funny so we'll, we'll get into it now Sorry, there's no music as well. I don't know. I separated the music and the audio. Um, but you can see we've taken Meow's Lament, the rock electric deck, as we see. So the next couple of runs, <clears throat> the next couple of encounters are all going to have one HP. I've also got the Pokeball, so it depends on what I want to snipe. So here I'm just choosing. I was like, do I go to the shop? And then I kind of spot there's a bunch of elites, like an elite gauntlet up the left hand side. And I'm like, can I make it? Because, you know, if I can get a uh, snipe one, possibly. I've never sniped two elites. I've only ever sniped one with the uh, Niaz Lament. I think here I'm just um, messaging Mars, the creator of the mod, saying that I'm streaming this because she likes to check it out and watch people play a mod, which is fair enough. And then probably I was a bit distracted. Again, it's 2 a.m. when this was officially recorded. And I eventually kill him after seeking for a card. So it is a bit slow at the beginning, I do apologise. But I thought I could fill that gap with my sexy voice. I'm also a uh, cannibal. Um, <laughs> I'm a bit throaty, a bit phlegmy, which isn't the best again for a recording, but it allows my voice to be silky smooth and low. I think here I'm deciding, can I snipe those two elites up the left hand side? And we go for it. So early card remove is kind of interesting because normally you sort of start removing the strikes, but the strikes are a lot of damage early. I was considering removing rock roof here because I don't like the um, the strength, but it does have AOE the the, the strength debuff. So instead, I remove a, a defense, and here I think I was deciding whether to capture it. Or um, to capture the Act 1 boss. I get a potion for my troubles. Baltoy evolves into Clado, which gives me an energy if you don't have any spells in your deck. I think, again, I was deciding whether I should capture these guys. And unfortunately, running into that jaw worm the floor previously means that I um, won't get the second one life elite. So, again, I'm just overthinking a bit here. Probably not. And then. You know, play the rock rough, kill everything with the AOE. And then recently in this patch, again, considering taking 50 block, but in this patch, um, Mars updated it to have Ampharos, which is deal eight and apply a stun to a random enemy twice, which is amazing for solo uh, when you have a one-on-one -on -one against the boss. It upgrades to a bit more damage, which the damage falls off later on, but the, the two rounds of stun just allows you to set up, especially if you've got the energy for it. So again, early on, I always recommend, as got recommended to me, here I was considering upgrading the Baltoy because the Claydol gets the extra energy. But that's a later upgrade. And plus, if I upgrade the Rare Candy here, I can always apply it to the Baltoy if I want to. So go for the Rare Candy because it just helps overall and it retains and it upgrades something in your hand whenever you want it instead of it just being one specific card. And now here's where the run starts getting um, very silly and also interesting. <clears throat> so I, I can seek for a stun and then I pull in my rare candy so I don't draw them it's good to have them in your hand and they retain as well so I know that I'm going to have them next time and then here my brain you know the cogs are finally turning and we're going to go in to the Amphros with the duplication so it's four turns of stun and obviously the damage 32 damage is nothing to be sneezed at as well. 
and because he's stunned for four turns, it's basically a one fight. I was just checking when I, I always forget whether Storm Calendar is turn six or turn seven, so I, I have to keep checking that. And then I just played a bit of a block card just to negate the right to recoil on me, and he dies. I don't think the blue candle is the best. Uh, Relic is not really needed for this deck. But again, it stops the, the clogging up of your cards. So going against things like um, uh, Sentries again, which I won't because I've just been against them. But yeah, I think I was thinking here, Electro Power combined with Anthros. So doing, I think it's like 18 up to 24 double. So it's like 48 damage in one. I'm just going to take a quick brief sip of my lemon sip, <clears throat> which is just to soothe my throat. Mercury Hourglass sticking for three each turn. Again, a bit of AoE. Kind of drops off. And we're against Mr. Lagavulin. So this is my first time really properly playing an electric deck, and I did want to try out the um, new Amphros upgrade. So I was lucky to get pretty soon. Here, I think again I was uh, messaging Mars because it's insane to stun the Lagavulin for four turns and not the Lagavulin, sorry, the Gremlin Knob. We've got like anyone who's played any amount of Slayer Spire, you've died to Gremlin Knob countless times. He's, he's just you thought you got one or two good cards in the early game, and then boom, you go against Knob who's like, Oh, you picked a skill, you silly boy, and slaps you back down to the menu screen. So, here I was just playing cards because when you, you play them, they evolve. As Mars likes to say, you know, you're playing a card game to play cards, so let's play some cards. And I think I make a bit of a misplay here because I'm, I'm looking at the stun, and I was try, I think I was trying to get the clay doll in play as soon as I could, but I couldn't seek for it because it, it goes into your discard deck. So I apply the stun, and I know next turn I do have a bit of an upgraded damage. So play the block again to stop the recoil. Maybe not playing the six as a debuff was the greatest idea, but again, checking Stone Calendar. I mean, you have to excuse me. I was very tired by this point. Oh, that was a bit of a misplay. I could have just rare candied the Mareep, but I wanted to get the Dexterity in play. Because if a rare candidate the Marie would have gone to Amphros and I would have stunned him for two turns again, I wouldn't have to worry about this extra damage. Yeah, here I realised. So obviously I could have done it the turn before, but at least I blocked that damage instead. Get the clay doll going for the extra. If you don't have any, I believe it's no supporters in your deck. Maybe another condition, but it's a, in, a, in essence a plus one energy per turn. So I've got four instead of three now. Maybe I'm just trying to figure out what I should wreck on me. And then uh, a bit of a misplay there because I Oh no, 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 it was, was well played. He's only got 7 HP now and he can finally attack. So I guess stunning is obviously quite hard. Um, to, I don't know, to, to you know, bring in line with other cards. Especially in this, you can sort of abuse it. I This is why I was like, if Mars doesn't see my run through, um, then she may not realize how broken the stun can be i didn't take any cards out i quite like pokemon center lady um good for the heal but it also it counteracts my um Boltoy upgrade and then i think this should be a free rare candy upgrade and 
we can snipe another elite here. So sentries are also could be worth capturing, but I think I was trying to capture the main boss. I can't remember if I do or not, the main axe boss. And instead I vote to go for AoE. So they're all pretty much half health. Again, I don't know what that thing is where the stone calendar kind of ticks up in the top right. Yeah, I don't know why I played that either. I think it was just because I, I could. It's very rare. I mean, that would have exhausted the end of the turn, so I could have saved myself 1 HP, but as you're going to see, the 1 HP overall doesn't necessarily matter. And I can slowly pull cards from my decks just so I'll draw, I'll cycle through my deck a bit quicker. And take a, a bit of damage here. Perhaps I could have double blocked there because I, I took the prize damage, which is a mechanic in this game, which um, certain cards, certain powerful cards, they... Um, they, they, for how powerful they are, it means that when you next take on block damage, you take three. Sorry, you take six. Um, you take an additional six HP. And then I don't know if Minim was um, upgraded or whether I just never considered it. Because it's like, um, is it well laid plans for the silent? But plus one draw, I was thinking, oh, that's just a nice extra bit of cycle, tiny bit of block. Again, 16 to wall here, but... Uh, and then I think... Don't play that. Come on, play the right candy. I've done this quite a few times where I've upgraded the Yamper because I think his up upgrade stuns. But and I think I did it there to be fair, but I didn't. I wasn't really punished. And now we're kind of here's where the wombo combo starts. Because I I think innate stun um, is kind of like broken. Because at the moment I've got two uh, two lots of stuns. I, I'll be um, or basically four stuns in my deck already. I'll be they're a bit harder to come by because I need to upgrade to get them. So three lots of stuns, I've just added, did I not take the Makuhita? It was, oh, it was already upgraded, wasn't it, from the um, the Molten Egg? Yeah. So I've got already, so now with that, I've got four lots of stuns already. And then here I'm just looking to see if anything's worth getting. The um, EV when it upgrades gives you three, seek three cards. Which again is, is one of the kind of, I don't know, is it balanced? Is it unbalanced? Obviously the way Mars has designed the game is that um, the master is, your, your character is um, not very powerful on the first rotation of your cards. But then as things upgrade and evolve, you obviously very, you come more in line. So this is the highest ascension that I've been on. And... Um, maybe it's the cards, maybe it's just because obviously stun is probably quite hard to balance and maybe needs to be looked at. Um, yeah, the, the higher ascensions might punish me a lot more. So it's kind of hard, it's one of those age-old questions. Do you balance for the early game? Sorry, I just uh, coughed a bit there. Do you balance for the early game? where I assume most players play, or you bounce kind of in lieu with everything. I think it's hard as well, because you can sort of only go by feeling. I believe with the, the mod, when you're playing the mod, you can only um, see who's downloaded you, your mod. I don't know, I don't think you can see concurrent players, like active players of it. And then you can't obviously get any data. I believe um, Megacrit, the... the original makers of uh, Slay the Spire, I believe to balance the game so 
like infinitely as he did, they could pull like card data and like user data of what cards have been used, what, what runs we're using. And I think there's like, there's a Slay the Spire uh, website where it tracks the data of, uh, you know, recorded data of cards being used. So they bounced it that way. Yeah, I've just realized um, that's happened a couple of times. There's, there's certain pixels. I think if they're not sized correctly, then um, they break and you just get that purple screen. So I'm I'm pretty sure that's been patched by now. But we've already got the foresters here to block. Just return to the gameplay now. I've got eight energy because um the flaffy evolvation. I I, I don't know, it's interesting. The flaffy I re I think I realised I sort of messed up. I think I'm just messaging Mars here in um you know mid uh midstream, like a professional streamer. Um and just letting her know what I was I was getting up to. But the, the Flaffy upgrade where it, it exhausts one card in your um in your in your so in your discard pile and gives you a spark which is a plus one energy and it does it every turn and you keep keep stacking sparks. So you keep stacking energy, but then it slowly burns away all your cards. And again another stun here. It takes a nice whack from the stone calendar as well. So I think I was worried I was actually going to die here. Because the, the Flaffy, like, evolve. I think I was so distracted because I was me messaging Mars, but I, I'm pretty sure that that is a Lightning Stone that I've got on my Potion Bar, which could have upgraded. I think I realised in a moment anyway. But yeah, I effectively only have this hand to beat him with. I need to somehow do force two damage or stun him because he's going to whack me for a lot. I mean, I've got this. It's a nice. I guess it's a nice trade off, and you know, balance wise. Because although you're getting a lot of energy, if you can't play it, if you don't have anything that has return, i.e., draws back to your hand, then you're going to get punished for it. And I luckily just sneak. Just sneak him down. So there, the the spark also, when you get to full spark, you, you start taking damage here. I think I really was panicking that I was going to die. Going to get beaten here. But to be fair, we've got a lot of block on demand. And as long as I at least have one attack card, I think I'm basically fine. Because I've also got the... Um, is it Emerald Hourglass? But I've also got the, Emer the Hourglass ticking for... Uh, three damage a turn. So here, I misread this. I, I think... I was that tired that I misread this and it said the first, I thought it was that you gained intangible for the first turn that you played it and also you did 40 damage per turn, which again I thought was broken, but I, I was just testing, you know, for testing purposes. I'm always a fan of Pandora's box. Um, in the in, in the base game, it's not always worth taking, but I kind of feel like it is in this game because you you've got so many things it can combo with. And I, I again, I haven't played the Rock, uh, the Rock Electric combination, so I just wanted to see what I could create. And it and it doesn't it didn't matter anyway because again, I've got one stun. I had two stuns there as well, and I'm slowly integrating even more card draw. And I, I also forgot, I think I was panicking so much that I also forgot to capture the boss from the previous, um, the, the, the Act 1 boss. So here, a new upgrade as well, with, with the Rotom Dex, if you have it, you can also actually see what the, the capture 
what happens when you capture you know a, the um the the enemy so uh, i just just realized i've still got the thunderstone and now we're going to see where the fun starts happening where the the, the fun the starts happening yeah a little, little pun there <laughs> Also upgrading the clay doll to get more energy ticking. And again, uh, 18 damage, two ticks of 18 damage, as well as two rounds of stun. More or less makes this... Uh, this fight over. And then I think I was confused here. I was reading what uh, Vault Absorb actually does. Because I thought it did damage, but it only did like two or three damage. And then I realized I had uh, D den. So again, apply another stun. And I can scry. And I think I was just playing it to exhaust it. And then we're just playing cards now for damage. So I upgraded this and realized it didn't really do much damage because I didn't have the card draw to make it work. But it does devolve back into a draw card. So we're keeping that cycle going. And then, so now the deck is slowly coming together. I've got Sandaconda um, giving me some defense and block, but, you know, stacking up that dexterity. And then I'm pretty sure I was worried about my defense still. I don't really like capturing. There's only certain things I want to capture in Act 2. So again, this was a confusion because I thought Vault Absorb was doing damage. And again, at some point soon, I realized what it actually does, which is, um, again, pretty insane. Being able to gain intangible for doing 40 damage. Okay, you might not be able to do 40 damage uh every time in a turn but as the, once you start getting your deck flow going i mean later on you could probably just become you could make that infinite and just always become intangible every turn so yeah i could have i realize now obviously i could have captured that uh like a turn or two ago And we've got even more transform. And I'm pretty sure I transformed the Thunderous here because it's three energy to play and it didn't do what I thought it did. Because it would have just been a dead card. The Rock Ruff I don't really like because it debuffs you. Again, Mars said she might look at that. And annoyingly, I could have kept the Thunderous, but that puts a supporter in my deck. And the Pseudo Udo, when you're not as if you're not playing with a water deck, is kind of kind of pointless because I don't know, maybe you'd, you'd always want the block. But the temporary HP, I don't think I really liked. So I was regretting my decision because that nerfs the ball toy. And then I'm not going to pay 431 gold here. Okay, don't don't look don't don't look at this bit. Um, um, Zephy editor, uh, no no scratch that. Oh, oh okay, there was a bit of lag there, so that's okay. So we're just getting into this fight for the first time. You've never seen us fight this guy before. I think I was trying to stun um, Bear at the back, who I know is going to debuff me. I was just trying to stun him out of um, his debuff. Which, again, wasn't even the best play here because Shell um, Shell Parasite gives you 14 um, plated armor. So it's it's 14 block, sort of no matter what. But I kind of thought if I did... I stunned the guy at the back. 
and I, I didn't even rare candy here. So I took a bunch of damage. So I thought I'll keep this one. I don't take the debuff. So I save scummed a bit, which I apologize for. Normally I'd, I don't. I just think I don't. I didn't think I, I, I know what I intended to do. If I misplay, I misplay, like I misplayed there. But what I intended to do was to stun the guy at the back. Um, so he didn't debuff me. And I thought it was the middle guy who told him to stun me. I mean, again, I don't, overall, I don't know if it would have made much of a difference because um, I would have taken a bit more damage. But I just wanted to see how far I could push the deck. And then here, the Rotom decks. That's real. That's really cool. I, I'm not. I'm not sure. I like to me that that's really impressive because I'm. I've never seen a card be able to do this in any mod that I've played. So I like the way that the engine um, has been tested. So I, you know, a kudos go out to Mars there. And again, if you want to play this mod, you can always um, uh, check in the description. I've got the Discord for it. I've got the workshop for it, and there's um, a, a readme on how to. If you even if you've just got the base game, there's a readme on how to what you need to install just to get the mod working. And so far, this has been one of the best mods I've played. So again, taking a bunch of extra damage. The resist stops most of the damage going through. I could have upgraded the Sandaconda. I've still got the same rare candy from turn one, so I could have upgraded the Sandaconda to probably stop a load of damage there. And then once again, going for the stun, slowly ticking for more damage. They're gonna apply weakness here, but it's, it's basically over. So kill him for 7, 12 resist, he's only going to hit for 5, i.e. 2. But most of this damage could have just been negated if I'd have played the Shelled Parasite. So, again, misplays happening. I'm not the best player in the world, by any margin. Again, card draw with a bit of a tick of damage. And then here's the puzzle. Orange pellets as well to negate anything. I do like a frozen egg. I I am used to playing the defect, so frozen egg kind of goes hand in hand. I mean, take that with a pinch of salt. Again, I have got to Act Twenty defect. I'm I'm trying to work on a Act Twenty um, heart kill. But I've just been playing so much of this mod that whenever I want to play Slay the Spire, I just play this. Which is kind of counterintuitive to... Um... Uh, learning, like, the base game. Getting better at the base game. So I'm looking at something to remove. Pseudo Wudo doesn't hit the mark. I'm realising as well... So I've just got rid of... Pseudo Wudo, and now I'm looking at what upgrades, what evolves I can I can take. And this is, and then I think I realised that this is just an upgrade. It's not, it's not an evolve because the, the the Lightning Stone upgrades, sorry, it evolves the Pokemon. It doesn't upgrade it. You still have to upgrade it even then. And I wasn't really, I don't really have the draw yet to make Manectric worth playing. So again, there was the, the Mareep in the shop I could have got instead, but I think the Thunderstone would be more useful. But yeah, discard one to do 15 damage, and you take five damage the next turn. I mean, okay. I played that anyway because I had the energy. I wanted to get rid of the stun because I know that I've got Amphros coming. I know I've got Yampa coming, so the only thing that really counts is it.
are the um, the cogs at the bottom. Which name eludes me. Again, he's him down down to one HP and stunned, and then the hourglass finishes him off. Cultist potion, get plus one strength every turn. More or less an instant take. And then the gods, for whatever reason, they bless me. And they give me a, a Marip, which hopefully, even in my uh, tired brain, just taking a sip of water here. I realize, and the, the, you know, the dots are connecting. Slowly, but they're connecting, surely. I think here I, I'd, I'd had a second wind of energy and was explaining what I could be upgrading, which is why I'm being slow there. But I probably should have, even though I did that upgrade, I probably should have just upgraded the Ampharos. It ticking for an extra like 10 damage would be far more useful. Okay, I don't. I see. I am playing fast and loose. I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm sort of considering, like, like you know, sort of looking back, whether being on a higher ascension would have made a difference. Obviously, the stun stop damaging coming in fine. I, you know, there's no way of arguing out of that. But the, it's just whether it's fair. And I'm like, because I'm thinking, oh, I, I'm wondering if I would have got away with this. I, I'm interested to see this at higher ascensions to see what's viable. And that's why I'm not wanting to suggest, you know, nerfs or buffs all the time. But some things, you know, some things are clearly broken because uh, there's some more stuff that gets funky later on. And luckily I stunned both of them. Um, but yeah, it's still, because obviously, as I keep saying, the stuns are very hard to play around. See, here was weird. So last turn I hit... So because I kill here, I don't actually get the next. This was strange. So in the last one, yeah, because my first strike killed, my second strike didn't proc. So I, I only had one strike, which is annoying. If I, if that had happened in the reverse, I would, both strikes would have gone off, but it didn't go off because it killed. So here I was reading, I, I, I was confused as to why, but obviously looking back now, it's because the um, the first stun killed. I could be explaining this in in the game as as well. So luckily, I draw stun, so I don't take thirty damage. That might have killed me here, but I have. Redraw my hand. Bolton becomes free after I think you play three or four cards. So it loses its energy cost, and of course, I can stack another stun. So we've got two turns of stun. We've already cycled through the deck. So the deck is building up. Obviously, stone calendar is ticking up as well. Maybe it, 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 it says halfway. When it ticks up there in the top right, that means it's reached halfway. It's just as a little reminder. But yeah, the plus all, the combo, the wombo, the other little mini combo, plus all becoming free when you play its uh, sister card. Yeah, minimum, uh, when you play minimum. It's, that's very nice as well. I did recommend to change that to instead of being double damage to it just being free, because a, a free card, um, a free 15 damage card is like, amazing by itself and then they're gonna tick now and then again ice cream there's certain relics that obviously they stack very well because there's, there's so many additional ways of gaining energy now and then ice cream stores any unused energy on a turn and rolls it over to the next turn infinitely i don't know why it's called ice cream um there's probably some insider like lore behind why it's called ice cream. But again, so in my hand at the moment, I have five stuns.
So I'm already blocking the 10 there. I don't need to do anything else. And then I think I'm realizing now I'm seeking for a poke. I'm seeking a Pokemon. I know he's stunned. He's stunned for two turns. So he's basically dead. So I just do 30 damage to the slaver in the back. And once again, I don't need to do anything about the guy at the front and the, the slaver in the back's dead. And again, the Rotom deck's interesting. Eight damage in one week is a useful pickup. nice and because I'm no coward I'm still going to uh, fight the double elites for the double elite rewards I do actually play the plated armor this time <laughs> and yeah once again the Rotom deck's coming in So I was looking through my deck there to see would Fighting Stadium actually help anyone. And it does, it does help the Makuhita, but the, the damage is sort of negligible. So I think I was panicking here because I haven't stunned the Gremlin Knob at the back. And then any skills I now play, he's just going to get stronger and stronger. But luckily, I stunned them both here. Obviously, an extra stun on the, the knob at the back may have helped me more. And, then, and either way, in this fight, you should always focus him. Or at least in, I don't know, 99 cases of 100. There's probably you know some edge cases where you don't, but I'm pretty sure you want to focus him. Because any skills that you play, he's just going to get stronger and stronger. And then, obviously, in the higher ascensions, he's going to hit like a monster truck. Like a truck on steroids. So once again, going in for the stun. I could have just played Carbink there because I would have done 28 damage and then also they wouldn't have done anything to me. I don't, I don't think it really matters because I, I block the additional damage anyway. And then once again, coming in with the stuns. And we thankfully win that fight. And we get another Thunderstone. I've not yet seen a case where I want to play Stormy Mountain. It just fills your deck with basically rubbish. I mean, it, it might have combined with the Thunderstone quite nicely. Um, and here, I was looking at another stun. Getting one intangible for three energy and taking damage next turn. Again, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not the, you know, I, I, I'm not the balance here, but having a two energy, 12 barrier... So I've got stun, and then even when they get through the stun, I've got barrier, so it's going to be very hard for them to do any damage. <laughs> so I think I was worried about dying here. I mean, the optimal play is always... 154 would have been 100. I don't think I would have been able to afford a memory, um, membership card. I mean, the optimal play normally is just to take membership card, but I, I think I was I was still quite afraid of dying, and I wasn't giving credit to how many stuns I had in the deck, but I just I didn't want to lose the run. I don't save scum if I'm dying. I save scum if I'm, I misplay. Here's me trying to justify it. <laughs> I've just sneezed and upset upset my cat, so <laughs> I'm sorry, Zuko. But the stun's coming in once again. Uh, the plated armor. Um, it means that 
I always have 14 block no matter what. Again, might be a tad. Might be a tad strong. But you are weak in the first rotation. And obviously playing three energy early on for 14 block. I think, I don't know. I don't know how much that holds up later on. If I'm being honest, in, in the higher ascensions, so... So I'm just seeking for a bit of extra damage and <laughs> playing a 50 damage but zero cost. <laughs> zero energy. It's not zero cost per se, but it's zero energy. And then it ticks for a bit more damage. You have to discard a card. The discarding card is honestly a benefit most of the time. But again, I've got four stuns in my hand now. <laughs> and I'm just getting rid of the Cynthia. But this actually really helps because it, it played D-Den again. <laughs> And I get to play the um, uh, the plus all for the extra thirty damage. And here might be where I learn what thunderous finally does, and it's it's being upgraded by the potion. I was worried about the the block here, but looking back through my deck, I've still got the multiple stuns. I thought this was broken, but it's just because it's already upgraded. You can't flick between the unupgraded and the upgraded. Bear with me a moment. Just had to clear my nose there. So yeah, here is what, when I realise actually what Thunderous does. I, I think I thought it was broke from from previously, when I, when I had it previously. That gets a tiny bit of extra block when you upgrade it. Doesn't seem worth. I, even taking the st Staccata, Stack Attacker, the, the, the one on the far left, because I am getting below half health. Um, so having the additional temporary HP might have been more useful to me there. So thankfully, once again, I am just going to play to get the shelled armor, Captain Parasite. I know it's captured Parasite, but it's Captain really. And again, I think I was confused slightly there for doing 28 damage with a reduction. With the, with the resist on the side. And then the barrier coming in. So I've got plated armor and barrier. I'm wondering if they, they shouldn't stack together. I'm not sure. It's not, you know, again, it's not my mod. I'm just wondering what balance wise it just seems. At this point, I think I realize, you know, I'm snowballing. I w I'm still worried about Act 3 because I've been caught out in Act 3 quite a lot. Because I don't know the cards well enough to decide whether they're. Uh, front loaded damage, you know, I, I don't know at the moment if I have the scaling I have a lot of energy and I have decent card draw and I have stuns but when you're trying to stun something that has 500 HP it's not um, it can still outscale you and this is where I think in the later uh, torments um, they're going to do a lot more damage so I'll, I'll be punished far more swiftly. So it'll be interesting to play lightning and you know heavy relying on stuns because the, the stuns just they stop a turn, but they don't uh, the the damage is going to fall off quite swiftly because I'm not upgrading myself while I'm stunning. But we you know we can only we can only test, and the goal is to try and get an Act Twenty kill and maybe an Act Twenty. Um, Um, heart kill because I have gone for a couple of heart kills but I, I think I've killed the heart less than 10 times for sure in total and I have probably about 500 hours I'd say across all platforms of um, Slayer Spire maybe even more than that so I could rest to be safe but I decided to go for the plus one strength overall. Makes Amphros hit for a bit more. And then 
this is just where the poor collector the poor collector comes in but double stun and 50 damage and also stunning her at the beginning locks her into she's just trying to summon a minion she just wants friends and I, I come waltz in and I'm like yo how's it going she's like oh let me show you my friends and I'm like no I'm sorry that's not gonna happen so in the background of the stuns I am get, I am slowly creeping up a lucky draw into plus all there. Um, discard the electrode. But yeah, the, the silly cobras. I'm slowly getting a bit of decks. Slowly improving my hands. So it does help me cycle through my deck. So the stuns. Maybe it's just that the rock doesn't help. Uh, the, the rock or the fighting type. Uh, isn't the most helpful type. The most, what is it? Like symbiotic type. It, it it's just the extra stuns. If I had anything else that could set up as well. I mean, it does have some um, barrier here. And it does have the the damage with the resistance. So, and once again, the, the collector has done nothing. The collector has been stunned and is now under half health. And even when they stop being stunned... Oh, no, sorry. They're stunned again, yes. Um, when they stop being stunned... Again, drawing into Plussy here. Puzzle, sorry. Plussy nearly making a Freudian slip there, I feel. I guess I should make a note. Maybe the similar to the... Um, the Yamper. Because the, the Yamper stuns, but then the upgrade of the, of the Yamper doesn't. So maybe Hariyama... And uh, Makuhita should like it should stun the first time round, but then shouldn't just do you know just do a lot more damage the second time round. But the extra stuns it depends. And then these are some amazing cards. I again I really like the artwork for these as well. Terrakion dealing twenty one damage in itself is quite decent for a one cost and then also gaining tangible the the, the terrakion has no effect for two turns he's actually a debuff so it can be um negated so here you know i was considering it but uh Zerka tree um dealing 24 damage and then exhausting the top three cards of your draw pile with it being a return um, you can wait till late game or halfway through and then bullets down something. The 20, 24 damage for one cost is uh, quite a lot. Um, but yeah, once you've got like 9 energy and then you don't care. Because it says you don't have to exhaust, you don't need to exhaust those 3 cards. You just wait, you wait for it. So uh, I think even making that slightly less... So I, here, um, I don't know, here I was messaging Mars um, and just explaining what I'd just done to the poor collector. <laughs> so I take the Safari Ball here. I was quite low health and I don't heal to full. And then I was worried about the massive drop off now in Act 3. Then going against Time Eater. I mean, stunning the Time Eater multiple times. I'm not really worried about it. it was getting to the boss that I had a problem with. I'm also, we're like, you know, we're 50 minutes in. I'm getting far more tired and I really didn't want to lose the run. Ascension 10 is the furthest I've been on this modded character. But I didn't. I, another option could have been taking Coffee Dripper because it would have allowed my deck. So on this turn, for example, I could have played the Zamazenta to get the barrier in, and that would have meant I take no damage. And then here I'm reading like what it actually does. At the start of your turn, gain three strength. Um, 
for I think it's one cost and it upgrades to a one cost gain five strength per turn which even demon form doesn't have that quicker scaling demon form I think is th cost is three for two strength per turn and then three for three strength per turn I'm pretty sure so yeah I, that was to me bro i mean it depends because it means you have to save a pokeball or you know be lucky with a safari ball and here i think i was confused because it glitched but um i realized after the run um it's just the my frozen egg coming in and upgrading it straight away because it's added to my deck which is a uh, really nice really nice synergy that i didn't know i um that i you know i forgot would would work in that way and i'm considering taking realu here the again the gain four energy in a turn and lose four energy is um is a debuff i didn't understand why you'd want to do that but it, you you play the realu to give yourselves some artifacts and then the next turn i'm feeling very cocky here and then the next turn, or you know, the next time it comes around, hopefully your artifacts haven't been used. Um, you get a plus four energy boost. So that round went pretty well. A lot of block anchor coming in to save the early game there. <clears throat> and I can see him taking a lot of damage. Would have been obviously been better if the um, the random stun had gone on both of them, but you know I've got to take damage eventually. But in the meantime, again I've just ticked for five strength, and this is now going to tick for twenty. And this time I hit both of them. So I'm slowly whittling them down. And you saw as well, I used um, a Thunderstone to upgrade my Eevee into Jolteon. For it to do a lot of damage. Again, I, I'm not sure. There's, there's probably a way of calculating it, but it's beyond my you know ability. But I'm not sure if... I, I, you know, what the inherent value of always having a seek I, compared to, you know, having a seek two cards throughout a deck, like my deck is getting pretty chunky here, it's, you were over sort of 20, you know, 25 cards um, unless you have a lot of um, in, unless you have a lot of card draw I, I feel like the seek is always valuable because you, then you can even always pull the seek and also it's seeking for three Without really, really much punishment, the prize of taking six additional damage is sort of negligible eventually. <laughs> and so I have a choice here between ball toy, uh, the bag of prep makes my turn one go, and I, I, I just take them all in the end. I don't really need. Um, the upgrade that ever upgrades everything in your deck because all the things that I want upgraded are already upgraded so it doesn't matter but I'm just wanting the plus energy and then slowly you can still ball from there I think Mars has considered removing um, ice cream from um, the relic pool because when she was making the mod I don't think she considered um, all the previous. So when I'm just looking who to draw and then doing a bit of extra damage. I did, she didn't consider the relics that were already in the game and obviously uh, infinite, more or less infinite energy, it, like you can't really bounce around. But again, Coffee Dripper could have helped me more.
But Coffee Dripper didn't allow me to, wouldn't have allowed me to get the, um, the, the Captain Orbwalker. <laughs> it's Captain Orbwalker, but yeah, the Captain Orbwalker, um, which is going to give me plus five strength. So as long as I delay by like one or two turns, I can afford to slip up some of my, um, health. I'm then going to be hitting, you know, an extra 10, possibly an extra 15, you know, throwing a couple of stuns in there. Yeah, it's, it's going to snowball. I think I'm making a note here and um, of the orb walker being five damage, and then also the uh, focus sash as well, um, giving you a ton of HP. Even though, like on death, you revive, and then I think the first time it's on death, you revive to one HP, which is kind of fine. But then on death, it revives to. Uh, it revives you to 24 HP, which again, it just feedback wise, it, I don't know, it it seems like an easy out. But, you know, take it with a pinch of salt. I don't know how many people are playing the mod or agree or don't agree. So I think because obviously I, I could have waited till after the, I need, I need to make a note of it somewhere. So I may as well message Mars directly. I could have waited till after the run. But something could have come up. So I, I just did it in the moment and then see what Mars's reply was later on. And I think she did watch the run and decide um, it was just because my run snowballed. But, you know, it's to each. To each it's, it's her mod. She can do what she wants with it. Um, I, I'm probably going to keep playing it either way. And there's the example of the Zerk Street... Uh, just coming in and cleaning up. I don't think I needed another innate stun in my hand. Um, again, a bit more card draw, but I I know that I'm going against Time Eater, who you know punishes you every twelve cards that you play. Uh, it, she, they. I don't I don't know what gender the the boss is. Um, the, they get strength, and then you'll go. So I was worried about playing any extra cards. I know that I'm going to go against two elites here. Um, so I'm just checking. <laughs> so I'll retract what I just said. Going, uh, I, I don't want to play extra cards, but I'll just pick a card that allows me to draw more. So it allows me to draw extra cards. But anything that slowly cycles me through my deck. And again, this is kind of like, this is your, your sort of fantasy run at this point. I'm pretty sure I've won, although not 100% certain. But, you know, you're going against Nemesis, who's probably, you know, everyone's been against Nemesis that, again, slaps you. Same, same as Gremlin Nob. You, sometimes you just don't want to see this, this ghost. So this is just a bit of a revenge fantasy being carried out. And, it, you know, once again, I had spare energy. Zerkatry finishing it off very nicely. <laughs> Again, I think I was laughing to myself because I could have played multiple. I don't know, playing it only reviving to one would make more sense. But the fact that you can play multiple of them, like have multiple of them in your deck. Like if you've got a 30 card deck and you've got one or two in there, if you're a bit of cycling there, a bit of energy, you need to be killed what, three times? I mean, there's fair in a bottle as well as a potion, which will um, stop you getting... Which will re you res you once. So, I th yeah, I th here I'm, I'm messaging Mars saying, okay, Focus Sash is crazy. Because Focus Sash combined with Mummified Hand... <laughs> I'm just gonna about how broken it is, but don't worry. I will, you know, it's not my fault. The broken, you know, blame blame the mechanics, blame the game, hate the game, not the player. And I want to win this run, so I'm gonna take that broken mechanic. I will abuse it. I'll also give feedback saying it is broken, but I I am. 
I don't know whether it's really called a hypocrite. Because if I always do it, then it's fine. If I tell people not to, then do it myself. So I'm acknowledging at least that it is, it is broken. And once again, I, I think I've lost the previous run against um, Giant's Head. Because, I, again, it's hard to know what my scaling is. I think there's a lot of cards that are front-loaded damage. I.e. they do a you know, flat amount of damage and nothing more. But now I've got card draw. Um, I've got, inf not infinite energy gain, but I've got a lot of energy gain. I've got the scaling just because of that one card plus five uh, strength per turn is like there's nothing else needed you don't even have to think about it so I, I think that does need to be does need to be addressed and again I'm saying this after I've already spoken to Mars she may have ideas of what she wants to do with it she may want to leave it alone because the other thing you have to realize as well is to get that uh super upgrade you have to either hold on to a pokeball for two rounds for, for two acts and then also get the orb walkers at the beginning which I, I don't know what the odds are of running into them in the, in the beginning. You've got that um, event as well that you run into two of them. And then capture it. And also it's even more powerful for me because I've got the frozen egg. So, you know, a lot of factors have to go into it. I just feel like even even a one for one, because it's one energy and it giving you only one strength, I, I still think is enough scaling. Because it's a one for one. And then it's like a ritual potion every turn. Still really powerful. But you, you've had to, you know, at least align all the stars to, to make it work at that point. If I'd have played any other card first, I would have killed him now. It doesn't matter because he's stunned, but. Here yeah, I was playing a bunch of extra cards. And because of the giant slow mechanic, he took more damage. I'm always a fan of the power potions. But there's nothing here that I want. I think I'm fighting fatigue here as well. I'm, I'm super worried about... You know, I'm not, not super worried. It's not the end of the world if I lose the run, but it would be a shame. If I lose the run when I've got this, I, I think here I'm, I'm, I'm explaining to the stream... Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash this ginger yeti if you want to see more of this like live in action I'm just explaining like the wombo combo going on and I'm already fantasizing about on <laughs> fantasizing I'm already figuring out the video I want to make of this so this is why I'm explaining even more but I, the beginning audio I think was was too bad which is why I'm doing this voiceover I do realize as well I probably could have captured just the instead of capturing my screen I could have captured just the the clip champ and if there is other video recording software that anyone recommends, uh, that's free. Although, you know, I may look at dropping some money into it. Um, if the, you know, the benefits outweigh the, the price tag. The, the ones I've looked at so far, are kind of, you pay a, a lot up front. And, you know, I might not even be doing this in six months time. It, you know, we'll, we'll see. The, the the clip champ corrupted. I think because I was trying to pull it from a this this video is at the end of my live stream. Um, I was trying to pull it from a six hour video, and for whatever reason, it kept corrupting. Uh, in the background, I was also trying to make <laughs> the glorious thumbnail that you should hopefully see. Um, and uh, once again, not having the software to, I've got a, an artiste friend, the one who makes my channel art and has made my icons, super talented. Uh, but she's very brutal in her explanations of things and she was just like you go in here you do this do this do this and that, that that's how you make it and she could she could create that thumbnail Pro it I think it took her five minutes when I was like oh this is what I, th I want a thumbnail to look like and I print screen one and sent it to her and she was like what like this and then I had made it in five like literally replied to me in five minutes and made it but I, I, you know, I've got to learn, and, and even if the, the YouTube side doesn't pay out, knowing how to edit a video and make a thumbnail could be useful for my own personal like side family projects. So, again, I, I, I haven't really spoken about sort of the synergy in the deck. 
I haven't hadn't really used. I think the only one I played before this, uh, the only time I played electric before this was um, electric steel, and I I tended to focus more on the steel, like getting the magnets, um, and I think I was aiming to go for the sizer. Yeah, it, it's sort of bad play to try and go for the archetype that um, you know, try and force a deck type. Like, you know, you, you, you've drawn one or two shivs or whatever, or you really want to get, lean into shivs, but you're only getting poison cards kind of thing. Um, so, I, I I think there might have been a couple of changes in the, in recent patches as well. I, again, don't quote me. Mars might be sitting there laughing at me because um, maybe I'm just saying this to make my, myself appear better. A bit of a misplay, but it's, it doesn't matter. But I, I do enjoy the, the the bit of energy to, to draw more cards, to cycle through your deck. Again, you get little bursts of energy there with the... I mean, yeah. <laughs> the damage on that could be nerfed, but I mean, either way, I did have a few boosts. You, you put a bit of strength behind that anyway, and it won't really matter. I think I was considering taking the gold berry here uh, for the extra five heal, but I think there's only like two fights left. So I don't think it really matters. And again, the other thing that the mod includes is that held item mechanic. For those who don't know, uh, if you have a held, any kind of held item in your deck, it triggers on combat start. So a 5 HP combat start heal. Not that bad. I mean, I already have blood, blood file. Um... There was a in, very interesting one, which I think is uh, charcoal in the fire deck, where it would give you, it would give you a spark. So on the second turn, you start gaining plus one energy. The second turn onwards, but it also damages you. First, it damages you for eight, and then if you upgrade it, it damages you for four on combat start, which doesn't sound like much. Like obviously now, if you're at nearly full HP, it doesn't really make a difference. But when you gain the item, I think I. Um, I think I transformed, like I transformed two cards into it and I was already on like 30 HP and I think I was worried, like taking 8 damage at combat start when, you've already, when you're only at 30 HP, you're down to 20, 20, 20 you know, you, you take a bit of chip from a couple of attacks, you're in the danger zone straight away. So it, again, um, it'd be interesting to see if that's workable later on, but it put me on a, it put me on a new uh, counter, you know, a new countdown. Which was another interesting mechanic to play around. Which is another you know fantastic reason to try out the mod and why I enjoy playing the mod because it just introduces so many more new mechanics. Again, plus two strength for zero cost. Bit pointless when I can play a, a plus five strength recurring. Again, there may be. I'm just wondering here what to upgrade. Do I upgrade the shell armor to plus two cost? No, I go for the extra plus one strength from Gira. Gira. I don't know. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. So we're in the final fight here, and it's a culmination of everything. So again, glug 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 glug. As Miles likes to say, you drink all my potions, gain a bunch of strength at the beginning. And I start the death cycle and into a stun, into card draw. I mean, there's a lot of card draw here, so the time eater could, could still like kill me. Maybe on a higher ascension again, um, they would. But for now, <laughs> and then once again, you know, having so many stuns in the deck. Draw more cards. Here, I'm obviously explaining. And the, the kind of, the good thing of having the draw cards for very low cost is, I'm obviously, I'm trying to burn the time eater mechanic. Oh, it cancels one card play. I think I was a bit confused there. But I'm trying to burn the 12 card mechanic and coincide it with what I actually want to do. So again, another stun into <laughs> another two stuns, which I'm probably laughing about on the stream. 
But then this also allows me to get the barrier up as well. So defensively, I'm slowly buffing myself. And then... Spending cards now because I've got the spare energy. I think I'm trying to figure out now, I'm trying to burn cards so that I trigger... I mean, four cards in a turn isn't that bad. But I'd, ask, I'd just have to be wary now. The, another thing I thought of could just be it's uh, a, a one-cost energy for plus five strength. I mean, even that is insane by itself. It just... It's um, plus five strength. A turn is even bigger. So now I'm I'm almost certain it's one. Like I'm I'm you know as soon as I got a couple of stuns off, I was almost certain it was a one. And then I'm just reading what the time eater's effect is. If you did want to capture it. Again, okay, Hariyama coming in for another stun. Oh, there's no way. Well, unfortunately, that looks like it's the um, the end of the recording there. And obviously, uh, the time to beat me, which is why I cancelled the recording. Um, so you, you won't see the destruction and the pain that they inflicted on me. No, I, I, I'm pretty sure I blitzed them. Um, I'm unsure why a professional YouTuber coming in. I'm unsure why that happened. But um, thanks for tuning in. If you want to see more, again... You can give me a like. Um, if you've got any feedback for me, uh, like I'm hoping the sounds good. Obviously, there's no there's no music in the background, which I realise, and I've captured the full screen instead of capturing the thing. But I might go insane if I have to record this video again because it's taken like three days to even try and get this fairly simple idea out. Um, yeah, subscribe to me. There's my Twitch links in the description. There's also if you want to play the mod yourself, I'd highly recommend it if you enjoy Slay the Spire. Um, there's details on how to do that in the description as well. Have a good day, guys. Thank you for tuning in. See you next time. And uh, bye for now.